Hi. Hello. We're continuing uh, Ray Franz's book, In Search of Christian Freedom, in the chapter The Faithful and Discreet Slave, on page 167. The subheading is Personal Individual Responsibility. Undeniably, the focus of the scriptures throughout is strongly on the individual and what he or she does, not primarily on what a class does. There is the constant call to apply the teachings of Christ to ourselves in a personal way. The Christian career, after all, begins with a personal, individual placing of faith in Christ's ransom sacrifice and a personal, individual offering of oneself in service to God through Him. We attain faith on a personal, individual basis, not on a group basis. How can anything change this personal relationship afterwards? Convert it into something based on and validated and governed by an organizational relationship. The result of a class membership or affirmation with a class in the sense in which the watchtower would use the term. Judgment by God in Christ and accompanying reward is repeatedly said to be not on the basis of class association or group judgment, but on a strictly individual basis. In the Society's New World Translation, we read, quote, And he will render to each one according to his works, everlasting life to those who are seeking glory and honor and incorruptibleness by endurance in work that is good. And then that's Romans 2. And now Romans 14, they quote as... A, Ray quotes from the New World Translation, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says Jehovah, to me every knee will bend down, and every tongue will make open acknowledgement to God. So then, each of us will render an account for himself to God. It's clear it's each of us, individually, but what we need to note here is that other translations don't have Jehovah there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the Lord. In modern translations, as I live, says the Lord to me, every knee will bend. And if you look at Philippians 2, the Lord is Jesus Christ, even though this text is quoted from Isaiah, where it's Jehovah speaking. Just thought we'd make that side point. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, another reference from Revelation. All the congregations will know that I am he who searches the inmost thoughts and hearts, and I will give to you individually according to your deeds individually according to your deeds and the I am he here is Christ again mm -hmm. new subheading biblical emphasis on the individual it is true that Jesus parables should apply to his church or congregation in its entirety and the principles advocated in them should be true of all those genuinely a part of that body of Christ but to oppose the but to oppose and argue against an application of this parable to individuals as unworthy of consideration is to argue against what the scriptures themselves do they show that as christians each of us should strive to prove ourselves to be a faithful steward of the master this is very clear in the parable of the faithful and discreet slave itself Matthew's account, the one most frequently referred to by the Watchtower Society, is paralleled by that found in Luke chapter 12. Luke gives a more specific designation to the slave. A slave can be any kind of servant. Luke's account identifies the slave as a steward. This factor helps throw light on the sense and application of Jesus' parable because of other scriptural teaching regarding stewardship for Christians. In reality, according to the context, Jesus' opening question, who really is the faithful and discreet slave, is presented not primarily as focusing on the identifying of some person or group, but as introducing a moral lesson that focuses on the conduct and course that demonstrate one to be a faithful and prudent steward of the Master. The Jerusalem Bible thus renders his words at Luke 14, 12, rather, verse 42. What sort of steward, then, is faithful and wise enough 
for the master to place him over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Ray goes on, thus Jesus was essentially saying, who among you disciples will prove himself to be such a faithful and discreet steward? The answer would depend on what each one did, not on what he belonged to or was part of. Additionally, Luke's account immediately follows this parable with Jesus' words about the slave who understands but does not do, and so receives many strokes, and the one who does not understand, and therefore does not do, and thus receives few strokes. Jesus concludes with this application of the lesson. Quote, Indeed, everyone to whom much was given, much will be demanded of him. And the one whom people put in charge of much, they will demand more than usual of him. End of quote. Rather than speaking of a group or class, the primary application by Jesus himself is to the individual Christian, what he does as an individual and what he proves himself to be. Ray goes on in the next sequence of paragraphs to give more examples from the New Testament, the Greek scriptures, as the stress in the apostles' minds is upon individual stewardship. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me that this concept of Judgment Day has completely disappeared from the Watchtower's view of what God determines for the future. Mm -hmm. Yet it is Paul's Gospel. If you go to Acts 17, you can plainly see that he spoke about stewardship and Judgment Day specifically, not mm -hmm. just to the church, as in these texts that Ray is using, but to the pagan world. Mm -hmm. To them, the idea of a day when God would judge everything that men have ever done according to his standard of righteousness and by a man whom he had appointed according to Acts 17 is mm -hmm. the controlling thought. All else, all the other stuff we call theology, all the other stuff we talk about in respect to Christ and God and the future have to be brought under the the general concept, the controlling concept of God being a righteous God, one day must judge men by his universal standard. Mm. That's Acts 17, by the way, if you want to look it up. The final thought before Paul's sermon to the Athenians is interrupted. Mm. So next segment, Ray goes more deeply into the individual accountability of Christians before God.